Hello everyone, this is Rajkumar Singh. Today we will have lectures on time independent perturbation theory for degenerate cases. As we are aware, perturbation theory is based on the assumptions that the problem we wish to solve is in some sense only slightly different from the problem that can be solved exactly. In such cases where the deviation between the two problems is small, perturbation theory is suitable for calculating the contribution associated with this deviation. So basically perturbation theory builds on the known exact solutions to obtain approximate solution. In this lecture we will discuss about time independent perturbation theory for degenerate cases. Let the unperturbed Hamiltonian of the system be degenerate. By degeneracy we mean that there exists a set of f different ion states psi n alpha with alpha equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on to f corresponding to the same ion energy E n naught such that we have H naught psi n alpha equal to E n naught psi n alpha with alpha equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on to f. Let this be equation 1. The ion equation of the state is H psi n equal to H naught plus H p. We write this H as equal to H naught plus H p operating on psi n. This gives E n psi n equation 2. We express the ion function as a linear combination in terms of psi n alpha. That is we write this ket psi n equal to C1 ket psi n1 plus C2 ket psi n2 plus C3 psi n3 and so on. That means in the summation form we can write ket psi n equal to summation over all alpha ranging from 1 to f C alpha ket psi n alpha equation 3 where the states ket psi n alpha are orthonormal through the relation this is scalar product bre sin alpha and the ket sin beta equal to delta alpha beta where delta alpha beta is 1 for cases where alpha equals to beta and 0 otherwise. The ion state ket psi n is normalized to unity through this scalar product bre psi n ket psi n equal to 1. This means this is scalar product bre psi n and ket psi n equal to now we are, we are writing the expressions for psi n in these two cases. So we have summation over alpha and beta from 1 to f c alpha star c beta and this is scalar product psi n alpha psi n beta equal to 1. Using equation 4 as in the previous slide we can write psi n bre psi n and ket psi n this is scalar product equals to summation alpha beta c alpha star c beta delta alpha beta and this is equal to 1 on we have further this is equal to summation alpha 1 to f modulus c alpha square equal to 1 now we must determine the coefficient c alpha and the first order correction to the energy using equation 1 and 3 in equation 2. As you can see it is in the previous to previous slide equation 3 is there and we have equation 1 and 2 here as the equation and ion state equation for the unperturbed Hamiltonian. So we have h psi n equal to h naught plus h p psi n equal to e n psi n or h naught psi n plus h p psi n. We have just separated this uh, two terms separately and this is equal to e n ket psi n. Now in the next line we write this ket psi n in the expanded form in terms of the coefficient c alpha we have h naught summation over alpha from 1 to f c alpha ket sin alpha plus h p 
and similarly summation over alpha c alpha sin alpha equal to e n summation over alpha c alpha sin alpha or we can just group the terms together using the i n equations for the unperturbed states for h naught psi n we can write summation over alpha c alpha we have taken common through these two expressions and this e n naught comes from this operator equation h naught psi n alpha so we have e n naught ket psi n alpha plus h p psi n alpha equal to e n c alpha and psi n alpha now we take the scalar product by multiplying each term of this equation with the bray psi n beta and we use the orthogonality condition as we have in equation 4. So we have now uh, summation over alpha c alpha e n naught and this uh, scalar product psi n beta psi n alpha plus the second term bray psi n beta h p psi n alpha and equal to e n summation over alpha c alpha and this is scalar product psi n beta psi n alpha. So we have now summation over c alpha e n naught and for this uh, we write delta alpha beta plus we have the second term as it is here and on the right side we have e n summation over c alpha and again this scalar product is equal to delta alpha beta. Now if we take alpha equal to beta delta alpha beta becomes 1 and we are left with in the first equation we have taken alpha equal to beta so it is c beta e n naught plus summation over alpha c alpha and this uh, scalar product is intact and that is equal to c beta e n. Now we just group the terms together so we have c alpha summation uh, sorry c alpha and this uh, scalar product that is equal to c beta e n minus c beta e n naught. In the next line on the right side we have c beta taken as common within bracket we have e n minus e n naught. Left hand side remains the same. Now we have using the equation on the left hand side itself we have summation over alpha c alpha taken common and for this uh, product uh, we write symbolic term operator h p beta alpha minus e n 1 delta alpha beta equal to 0 for all alpha beta starting from 1 and going up to f where we have taken this h p beta alpha for this scalar product psi n beta h p psi n alpha and e n 1 equal to the difference e n minus e n naught. For non-vanishing solution, uh, the coefficients of the determinant h p beta alpha minus e n 1 delta alpha beta must be 0. So, the determinant when equated to 0 gives f different roots e n alpha 1, which are the first order correction to the i n values e n alpha of the Hamiltonian of the system. The coefficients c alpha are determined by putting the values of roots of equation as obtained in equation 7 and solving the corresponding equation. Once these coefficients are worked out, the i n function psi n can be determined equation 3 as it is in slide here. Psi n equal to summation over all alpha she alpha and sine alpha. So once we know these coefficients, we can determine this uh, ket psi n. Now, an important observation here is that the above roots are distinct and hence the i n values of the Hamiltonian are not degenerate. The f fold degenerate level e n naught of the unperturbed system is split into f different levels like e n 1 equal to e n 0 plus e n 1 1 e n 2 equal to e n 0 plus e n 2 1 e n 3 equal to e n 0 
plus en31 and so on. In this way, we find that the perturbation lifts the degeneracy. This lifting of degeneracy may be partial or total, depending on the fact that whether all the roots are different or only a few of them are different. Just to summarize, we have seen in the time independent perturbation theory for degenerate cases, the perturbation lifts the degeneracy. But this lifting of degeneracy will depend on the fact whether the roots obtained through the secular determinant are all different or only a few of them are different. With this, we conclude our discussion on time-independent perturbation theory for degenerate cases. Thank you so much.